The first time you see cells in the microscope, that's uh, I don't know, pretty moving. There's live living things that are tiny microns, and you can see them moving around, and you're controlling their fate and their growth. I think the first microscope was built with the purpose of looking at cells of biological material by Lee von Hook like 400 years ago. So even though most scientists might use them now for metals and non-living systems, it began as a way of studying living systems. This is far. Well, I'm trying to make artificial surfaces that interact with biological surfaces Six. or biological volumes, and the surfaces I make have very tiny features, so I want to be able to look at the surfaces, but I can't see them with my eyes, so I use big machines. Seven. Sometimes I change the surfaces I make and see how those features change every time I change processing condition. Eight. So how fast I coat them, how thick I coat them. Because uh, no one really knows how it works, but your body knows how to do it very well itself. So we're trying to figure out what your body does on its own that we don't understand yet. Eleven. Um, the machine I was using is called an atomic force microscope. Well, it's like a tiny finger that rasters back and forth no, over a surface. And based on what the finger feels, I can get a map of the surface. Twelve. This is this is my favorite. It can see things that are, you know, nanometers instead of light microscopes can only see millimeters, microns, so on a much bigger scale. I can't see any of this with my eyeballs, the things that this 15. microscope can see. Uh, like you literally taking your finger with your eyes closed and moving it up and down a surface, and based on what the surface felt like to your finger, you draw a picture with your eyes. 17. 18. 19. It's pretty daunting. There's machinery that's small and machinery that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars so that at any minute you can break and completely fuck up. So you just hope someone else does it, not you, and that you keep learning from these machines that, you know, other people just like yourself have built. Uh, this is number two. This is three. Well, I mean, the first time you look at a type of sample, you have no idea what you're going to get. And you have no idea if what you're imaging is actually is what your sample looks like or, you know, all sorts of artifacts you're introducing to it. Maybe the, you know, hundredth time you're looking at a similar type of sample, it's not as neat or interesting or surprising, but Five. usually it always is the first time. It always takes you. Well, the thing is that they never, they always look like things you've seen in real life or very pretty geometric patterns and they're never what they actually, you would never see the image and know what the sample was or even begin to think that's what the sample could have been. It's usually something that reminds you of something in the macroscopic world you see around you or just very pretty geometric patterns that you haven't seen before. Eight. Nine. Eleven.